Papua New Guinea, country in Oceania. You must be heard the country's name notably in recent days. Also, the gory news of violence transpired from wet where in the country following reports of rioting and looting that left the two largest cities in flames. The administration of Papua New Guinea set about restoring order on Thursday, where at least 15 people are said to have died in these incidents. And now it's been 16. The unrest began in the capital, Port Moresby, on Wednesday after hundreds of police officers, prison staff and public servants walked off their jobs in protest over a pay dispute. The pay reduction was ascribed to an administrative error by the government of Papua New Guinea. Nevertheless, what is the backstory behind it? Why people rioting and looting the country's two biggest cities? From where it all started, Hadi, what is the current situation of Port Moresby and Leigh? Let's clarify all these doubts. So, with its vast cultural and biological diversity, Papua New Guinea is a country best known for its beaches and coral reefs. Situated in the southwest Pacific, it includes the eastern part of New Guinea and its offshore islands. In the country, more than 800 indigenous languages spoken all over the country up to the Japanese invasion of the northern portions of the islands in 1941 and their progress into Port Moresby, which resulted in the suspension of civil administration. Papua was governed under the Papua Act. During the conflict, Papua was ruled by a military administration from Port Moresby, where General Douglas MacArthur occasionally made his headquarters. As noted, it was later joined in an administrative union with New Guinea during 1945-46, following the surrender of Japan, and Papua New Guinea was born. Now, finally returning to the present, James Marap is the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea since May 2019. The government's payroll system experienced a technical glitch, which Prime Minister James Marap downplayed as the cause of the rioting, by which approximately half of the take-home pay for some public employees was withheld from their paychecks every two weeks, or the equivalent of $100. Following this, today a total of 16 individuals have lost their lives during recent riots coinciding with widespread strikes by both police officers and soldiers. Drone footage showed mass looting in Papua New Guinea's capital. Port Moresby amid widespread looting and arson after a day of protests. The unrest has escalated, resulting in a tragic loss of life as tensions continue to rise in the region. Authorities are grappling with the challenges posed by the simultaneous strikes and civil unrest, further complicating efforts to restore peace and order. Six patients injured with bush knives, or machetes and 25 victims with gunshot wounds were treated at the capital's main hospital. Violence in the city subsided on Thursday, with authorities flying in police and military reinforcements to maintain order. Thus, high unemployment and rising living expenses have made Papua New Guinea's instability worse and have raised tensions throughout the country. Now, the Papua New Guinea government is now working diligently to restore order and address the underlying issues. Whereabout, Prime Minister James Marape held a news conference on Thursday, acknowledging the challenging situation. He said Port Moresby is currently under stress and duress. The unrest emerged as a result of police, soldiers and other public servants not being at work due to the ongoing pay dispute. However, I must emphasise that the situation is gradually improving. The government has deployed an additional 180 defence personnel to Port Moresby to reinforce security and control the escalating tensions. Prime Minister stated, we understand the concerns of our citizens and we are committed to addressing the root causes of this unrest. We recognise the need to improve economic conditions, reduce unemployment and ensure a more stable environment for our... Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has now urged calm in the face of this turmoil, that his administration is keeping a close eye on the situation. Prime Minister Albanese said, we have not received any requests for assistance from our closest neighbour. 
However, our High Commission in Port Moresby is keeping a very close eye on developments, ensuring the safety of Australians in the region. It's important to note that Australia and Papua New Guinea signed a bilateral security agreement last month, indicating a commitment to support one another through trying times. Watching closely from a distance is the international community as Papua New Guinea strives to restore order. We will keep you informed as this scenario develops. For the most recent news and analysis, keep an eye on this channel.